Okay, I'm here with Chris Power again. We're talking now in March 2018. That means that it's nearly a year um, on from when it originally happened because um, mothering, Mother's Day is coming up this next Sunday and the, the day after the explosion was Mother's Day. So uh, you can see now that there's lots of scaffolding on these buildings. This is the edge of Port Sunlight. You were living here up until the time of the new ferry explosion. Right now you say they've, they've done a lot of work inside and it's empty at the moment. Um, that might even be ready, but they're working now on the exterior of the buildings. And they've, uh, they've found some interesting issues with the, the age of these buildings, haven't they? Yeah, the builders have to go inside first. And when they went in, they found that um, some of the plaster had horsehair, which meant that they were worried that it would have anthrax in. So in other countries with horsehair, it's been known to uh, contain spores of anthrax. So they were concerned. It is empty inside. There's no kitchen. It's still like a shell. There's no plaster. The ceilings are down. But what they need to do now is seal the roof. So if we, if we just have a look here, So you are right, 12, 12 months ago I came running out of that door because there was a huge explosion and I remember just looking up here and seeing this couple just hugging out of sheer fear and crying and I ran up because I thought initially it was a bomb uh, and we know now through the press and media it wasn't, it was an explosion at the furniture shop. So this is 12 months on. When we were here last, we could see the damage of the impact of the blast. And we're looking around. You can see the contractors have moved in. They've started on the roofs. But before they can go inside, they must get those watertight. So they are doing a good job. I mean, I don't know when that's going to be finished. So the memory 12 months ago is horrific for me because this was like a war zone. And... You can see scaffolding has gone up. Um, if we just walk up here again. And it's fascinating really in the sense of still 12 months on, the government have not stepped in. I don't have the answers for that. But what I do know is that last year they, they made a statement which was this explosion was not a national incident and I, I think that's awful because I disagree with that I think anything like this that endangers lives is a national incident we're still so, looking at the scale so, over here aren't we so over we, we, here we can see how we can still see signs of the explosion you can see the windows were blown out on these houses so they've got boards up at the moment and if you look over there Michael you can see some of the shops which are still behind the boarded area uh, there's a question mark on those whether they're going to be demolished but that empty space wasn't here the last time we we talked about the blast sadly all those shops have been demolished and this is what people should understand it's 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 a memory that will always be with people on that night. It wasn't just here where the foundations are. It blew the houses, the shops, local businesses, family run businesses. And I think it's awful that 12 months on we're still in this situation. I mean, look around. Apart from what we see in the road is now cleared and we've got a, a walkway through there now, which is good. And we've got some of the shops that have opened on the other side. That's a positive thing. But we still need the government to come and help with regeneration. And the victims, I mean, families are still displaced. I mean, we are, 12 months on, we're still in rented accommodation or temporary accommodation. Uh, and, and as I said, that's all because we, we, you know, we have to wait until this is done, until it's finished. And that's going to take time. Um, it was one huge explosion, Michael, as you can see the foundations. 
fancy, and there were several things in this building, weren't there? There was um, there was a dance studio, yes. and it was about three different things, wasn't it? Yes. And now um, it just shows that the whole thing was that the, the the roof came off and lent forty five degrees down, and it just the devastation just around it was was just tremendous. I mean the the shop that was next to that one one um, one particular business that suffered huge damage was the uh, the Cleveland Arms, and they reopened, but they were almost right next to it. Yeah. So you can you can see already the foundations here. I mean, whatever happened on that night, it was huge, and it just devastated not only lives but buildings and shops. And so, I, I'm sad that 12 months on, we're still talking to each other about the explosion. And have they found any more about the courses, um, you know? Well, what we do know, and I can't say much, is that uh, one person's been charged and another company's been charged, but we have to wait to see what the outcome is on that. Uh, there will be a court case and hopefully the right people will be charged and justice will be done. Because at first it was thought it was maybe a, an accident involving simply a gas build-up, yes. you know, but, but it moved on from that to, to something that may have it may have happened that was less of an accident. Yeah. So here we are, again, if I just have a look over here, Port Sunlight Village, Grade 2 listed buildings, the scaffolding is uh, there, you can see on the roof Again, as I mentioned before, there's still work to be done, tiles to go on. It's going to take a long time. And have you been given any any estimate as to how long it might be before you can go back into where you where no, you should be living? No, the only thing I can say is when when we've talked to the contractors, what they've told us, it's going to happen in stages. If we just cross over. So the stages are, first they have to water tight the roofs. Once that's done, we'll have the windows and doors replaced. And then they'll have to move inside the other contractors and start work on the internal work, such as the plastering, the ceilings. And then once that's done, you've got the furnishings, such as painting and decorating the carpets and everything else that goes into making it at home again. It was sad really, we couldn't spend Christmas here. And I remember last year, the Christmas tree being up and as a family we sat around. But this year we had to spend Christmas in, in our temporary accommodation. But yeah, they, they do have memories for me. I remember just sitting in that very room and when the explosion happened, the glass came in and the glass went right across the floor to the kitchen and people were banging on that door asking people to leave. What was good though, it was, it was um, good to see the community come together and the church is opening their doors as a hub, a social club, neighbours rallying around and heroes, heroes, people running into the rubble and grabbing people out. Sadly, as you know and I know, on that night so many people were seriously injured uh, too too terribly injured so I'm afraid it's 12 months on and work is slow but the positive thing is things are happening and that's what we need to see well thanks for speaking about this again and uh, one, of course one of the really bad things was the restaurant because the, um, that was very close to that epicenter the, the roof caved in there but everybody got out there were some people that went to hospital but at least nobody died mm. but it was very serious yeah Absolutely. You know, serious injuries, you know, yeah. it was. And we are still waiting for, for answers, but we've talked about how we might find out there's, there's something a bit more to what might have happened with, the, with gas, um, as you just talked about before. So, uh, Chris Power speaking to uh, me, Michael Farrion, 107 News here in New Ferry at the edge of Port Sunlight.